Good afternoon, beloveds. So I was not on at 9 a.m. or 9.15 uh, like I usually am because I was sitting in the ER. Um, the cough proceeded to around 2 o'clock pick up and get really bad. And it was really bad overnight. And at about 4 o'clock in the morning, I think I told my partner that night that I was going to, that we, depending on how the night went, we were going to go to the ER in the morning. And it went that bad. And so we went to the ER in the morning. Uh, so I was in the ER about um, 10 minutes after um, 8. So we were in the ER for a little over an hour. Uh, and a pro tip, if you have good insurance, go to an emergency room, not an urgent care. Okay? Um, uh, they're coded differently. And most good insurances will cover emergency room visits and they do not cover um urgent care visits and there are enough freestanding little emergency rooms like you don't have to go to a hospital to go i it's about four miles from where i live it's between we, my house and where i go to church and so that's where we went and it was you know it was a nice little place a little quiet little place uh i think we were the only the second person in there and because it's connected to the hospital that my doctor is all I had to do was hand her my ID. Um, she didn't need my insurance card. She didn't ask any questions. She just made me verify who I was and uh, took me back. And they took me back. And, and, and the main reason that I wanted to go to the emergency room was because I knew that they would do a chest x-ray. I have pneumonia. No, when I say I have pneumonia, I don't have full-blown you know, lungs filled with fluid pneumonia. I have a small developing spot on my right lung. Uh, and so they gave me a cough medicine, a nasal de decongestant, and um, an, an antibiotic. Am I thrilled to be on the antibiotic? No. But I don't want to have uh, pneumonia. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So, and they were like, uh, so do you need us to write you a note? for work and I was like no he can cover me today and I don't work tomorrow because they could write me a note for two days and I was like no I'm good so he's he's already covered me for two weeks so uh hopefully now that you know and apparently whatever virus I initially had I've already kicked that because they did they did that panel where they they check you for flu covid um it was flu, COVID, RSV, and strep. They went ahead and added a strep test. That was so much fun. Uh, and I tested negative for all of them. So whatever virus initially kicked this off, I fought that off. The uh, pneumonia was a side effect. So, all right. It is April 26th. Our title is What is God Metaphysically Considered? And our author is George Anna Tree West, and this is from her your uh, her Unity Ordination application, and this was submitted in June of 1935. So, I feel like I've read this one before. I think Reverend Jesse did this one. Either that, or we've had another reading from the same um, uh, application. Uh, the lozenge is uh, soothing, so sorry about that. I thought I'd have it a little more gone before I got in here, and clearly not. All right. All spiritual unfoldment must, of necessity, start with the conception of God as spirit. The mind must completely let go of all preconceived ideas of God as a superman, a sort of king, doing, doling out to his people both favors and punishments. With the concept of God as spirit, there naturally follows a clearer understanding of omnipresence. The student grows in the tremendous realization of God, spirit, as the invisible life and intelligence underlying all physical things. And immediately the whole universe becomes transformed and takes on a new meaning. Jesus not only defines God as spirit and the Father, but also describes God when he says, when he said God is love. 
Perfect love is perfect harmony. Perfect harmony is inclusion of wisdom and power. So in his description of God as love, Jesus ascribed to God omnipresence and omnipotence. In those three words, God is love, he recognized the all wisdom and all power working together for the all good. When he described God as spirit, John 4, 24, he claimed the omnipresence or everywhereness of the love that God is, for spirit is limitless and indivisible. The universal mind is in all and through all. In beholding God as spirit or the individual life, intelligence, harmony, and power of the universe, we recognize God as creative principle, that which is the cause and source of all that is, pure being, all law, and all truth, primordial substance, ultimate cause, or more simply phrased, that from which all, pro which all proceeds. When I got, um, <clears throat> license, um, and I don't know how unity does it, uh, but in science of mind, we take mm, three to four years of three, well, three to six years of classes. Okay. So you apply to school. It is a master's degree. And you get philosophy classes, spiritual classes, business classes, leadership classes, all of those. Uh, Bible classes, you know, the whole gamut. And a number of different religion classes, too. And then to get out, to graduate from um, ministerial school, you have to take 10 exams. Okay? 10 exams. When you take 10 exams... Um, what you are doing is you are, uh, and they ask you for a variety of classes. And I am quite sure that I answered that question. You know, what is God metaphysically? In so many words, probably not, but in a roundabout way, I'm sure several of the classes ask that question. Um, and so, and it's extremely important because if you're going to be a minister, you kind of got to have an idea of what you believe about God. Uh, our ordination is a little different. We have a three-year minimum apprenticeship. So we get our license. Uh, and in that, you know, uh, one, I took the written exams and then we had an oral panel. And the oral panel was not about knowledge. It was, it was how do you do this in person? You know, what's your style? Uh, and it was actually a wonderful experience. Because my practitioner panels were not a wonderful experience, but my my licensing panels were a wonderful experience. And then, so you go through three years in a, as an apprentice, and there's a number of ways you can do it. I was, um, what I did was I was a staff minister at in, in an established church with a senior minister. And, and so you do all the things. You do all of the things. Um that come with being a minister. You know, I did Sunday talks. Uh, I taught classes. I did counseling. Uh, I was, because mine happened uh, during, I also managed a COVID response, uh, not a COVID, a hurricane response team. Um, you know, so you do all the things that ministers do. And uh, I had a very good senior minister and a very good, you know, I, I learned a lot at the center that I was working at. And um, when it came time for ordination, so you submit an application, you tell them about yourself, and then you show up. And again, you meet with a group of ministers, and they ask you a bunch of questions. Now, interestingly enough, based on your paperwork, that's what they ask you about. So mine didn't ask me about my belief in God. Apparently, my belief in God was apparent. Uh, what they asked me about was self-care. So, but I talk about my belief in God because it is central to my um, teachings <coughs> from the standpoint of, I do believe that God is love. 
And because I do believe that God is love, I cannot believe that God is an old man sitting in a chair in a sky, in the sky with a big book, waiting to scratch my name out of the book of life. I can't believe that. It goes against everything that I have learned and experienced that God is. So that is the, and, and, and so when you ask me about God, um, the, one of the things that I try and do is I try not to put personality on God. Um, because when we put personality on God, we're doing two things. One, we are limiting God. And two, we are creating God in our own image. And God is so much bigger than that. And that's the thing is there's no way to explain God. But when we reduce the personality, when we talk about the, as she says, the omnipresence, when we recognize that God is the very spark of life, <clears throat> the very spark of creation, that God isn't and cannot be bound by time and space. Therefore, God is everywhere present fully all the time. There's nowhere God is not. There's nowhere that God is not. And it reminds me of one of my favorite, um, I want to say it's a Nas Rudin story, uh, but I it may not be a Nas Rudin story, but it does come out of Islam, where a, an imam um, <coughs> gave his students chickens and said, go kill a chicken where God cannot see, and then bring it back. And one student came back with a chicken under his arm, still alive. And the imam's like, what's this? And he said, well, first I went here, and then I went there, and then I went there. And then I realized there's nowhere God isn't. There's nowhere that God can't see me. So there's nowhere I can kill the chicken. And the um, imam went, that's, that's the lesson. That's the lesson. God is fully present everywhere in the fullness of power, omni, on, omnipresence, omnipotence, all the time. God is a principle, not a personality. And that's one of the reasons why we like to say that principle is not bound by precedent. So just because it's been happening this way doesn't mean it has to continue to happen this way. Okay. If we go back to first cause, which is God, we can change things. But it does require us to let go of all of the limiting beliefs that we have about God. And trust me, we all have, we all have them and we all have a lot of them. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I always give props to the Hindus. Because the Hindus kind of looked at God and went, yeah, it's too big. I can't. And so what they did was they broke, they, they broke God down into bite-sized pizzas. They went, okay, well, right now, what I need to deal with is this aspect of God. And so I'm going to name this aspect of God this. So it looks like a separate God, but it's not. They all recognize when you go back, if you, tr you trace it back, then that's just an aspect of God. Um, it all goes back to Brahma. And Brahma is principle, not personality. And it also brings up that other idea that absolutely is, is core central to our beliefs in New Thought and Science of Mind in particular, and Reverend Jesse in, 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 in definitely in particular, because he's the one that taught me this. And the reason why God cannot judge, not will not judge, not does not judge, but cannot judge is because there's nothing outside of God. We are not separate from God. We live, move, and have our being within God. Ernest Holmes says this, okay? And he says it a lot. We are not separate from God. So God cannot <coughs> judge us. The reason why we can judge is because we can create that illusion of separation. <coughs> All right. 
I don't want that to get any worse because my throat is already really raw. I think I have said what I wanted to say. I commend Georgia Ann Tree, uh, Tree West to you. I think it is an absolute beautiful reading about, you know, what God is. And does it cover everything? No, but nothing can. But it's a good first step. So, uh, and so the mission today, should you choose to accept it, should we choose to accept it, is to go back and look at what we have been taught about God and start letting go of the limiting beliefs about God. Start letting those go. Because the more limiting beliefs of God that we can let go, the more unlimited we ourselves can become because we start to take the limits off of ourselves as well. All right. Because as I said, quoting Ernest Holmes, we live and move and have our being within that spirit, within that spirit. So look at those limiting beliefs and let them go. Let them go. All right. The other mission is the same mission I give you every day. Spiritual practice of self-care. All right. Do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. The most loving, kind, and compassionate thing I could do for myself was to ask my partner to take me to the ER. Uh, and he did. He didn't. He's like, all right, when you're ready, let's go. Um, and then he took me to Target to pick up my meds. And then he took me home. And then he went, you know, he got to go to lunch with his friend. And then he brought, brought me lunch home uh, and dinner and lunch and dinner. So, you know, I'm set for the weekend. I don't have to go anywhere or do anything or see anybody. Hopefully, I can, I can though, you know, but I got to take care of myself because I've got more stuff to do. I've got more stuff to say. So, uh, but in order to do that, I'm going to get off. So, uh, the quick, just the housekeeping, we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. I encourage you to go like, share, subscribe, follow, comment, do all that. Uh, the email uh, is, uh, for the constant contact is info at creativelife.org and our website is back up. So if you go to creativelife.org, our website's back up. So you can use that, uh, you can go there. And then, um, I'm going to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a healing day, a restful day, a taking care of yourself day, a letting go of those limiting beliefs about God day, a recognizing that you are within God day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. All right. As I like to remind you, explore the truth of your being. Because the one promise I can make you, and it's the only one I can make you, is the person that the divine knows you to be is good. All right? You are a beloved... <coughs> you are a beloved expression of the divine. A brilliant light, a divine spark, your spirit in motion, you are God in action, or as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, you are Godly. All right, I'm going to go take care of this cough. Y'all take care of yourself. Reverend David should be on soon. You know, he can pop on anytime from four to 10. Who knows? He tries to go around five. I should be back around 9 a.m. tomorrow. <sighs> Y'all treat with me that I get a good night's sleep tonight because I really desperately need it. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time. <laughs>